Well, hey everybody. I'm back after my painting job on the nose and the tail of the Camaro. And if you watched my last video, uh, you saw that when I was finished, parts looked pretty nice, but I had some runs. I was really kind of disappointed. And, you know, I, I know runs are always a hazard. And uh, I'm still, I, I'm learning the new gun. I, I should say the new gun technology. Uh, my sense after spraying a bit, and I know you've got the ability to adjust with fluid controls and so forth, but I would say is that this gravity gun, gravity fed gun, feeds faster uh, by nature than my old siphon feed gun, which is what I used to use to paint cars years ago. And so I'll have to adapt a little bit better. But at the moment, the mission right now is to see if I could take the runs out without sanding through the paint. And I'll say as in years past, I've color sanded solid color paint before, but I've never had to sand out runs. And you know, when you're, when you're color sanding, generally you're using like 400 or 600 paper and you're, and you're just, you're trying to do some smoothing. But this run stuff is a little bit tougher. So there are a couple strategies. One is uh, you can use a, you know, a really small sanding block or a, or a file type system to knock off the high spots. Um, but also in doing some searches uh, and looking for some advice, um, I ran across it in several places, but one was actually a Sherwin-Williams site for automotive refinishing uh, that recommends using a glazing putty that recommends using a glazing putty like this, a two-part polyester, and putting that two-part polyester glaze, very thin glaze, but to lay that over the top of the run and then use that to prevent, um, it, it'll help guide you in sanding the run and not the areas around the run. And eventually you work down and sand that all off. Now, that sounds to me like it's a little bit of a challenge uh, and I'm still a little uncomfortable with it, but I think I'm going to give it a try and see how it works. I have a number of runs. The uh, first one I'm going to try is on the, the uh, front fascia, that lower uh, extension. And here I'll show you uh, where we are. Well, you can see right here on, there's a, a pair of runs right there. Let's see if I can get a good, a good view of it. So there, there are two of them right in here with a little bit of a sag. And further down, you can see there are a number of others over there. Uh, and I'm sure the technique will work there too. But my first experiment, I'm going to start with a small one. And I'm going to work this area. I have all the different sandpapers that I need. I have, um, I have that polyester filler. And I'm going to try to do is lay a little bit across here, again, so that it highlights the runs. And then I'm going to try to sand this down and get it back to that surface and, uh, and work through it. Now, perhaps on a color sand, you know, most of these techniques that I've seen kind of apply to doing clear coat where you don't want to sand through the clear coat. And maybe I don't need to use it as much on the color coat because I think it's a little bit thicker. But I don't want to sand through the color and get down back to the base color underneath. So I'm going to give this a try and we're going to see how it works. Okay, so this morning I'm going to mix up some of this Evercoat uh, putty. And they have some very specific mixing instructions. I don't know, for, for the purposes that I have it, I don't know if it's quite as critical as a permanent body repair. But um, they give you a template. The problem is that if you use the template one time, it's done. So I kind of copied on the back of an old spreader here um, a two-inch circle, and they want a dab of the you know you put a dab of it on here that covers the two-inch circle, and then for a two-inch circle you use about half the width, uh, a little bead of hardener, and then mix it up. And I'm going to apply it over the over the one run here, and if I have more left, I'll I'll. I'll work to a far further run. We'll see how far the material goes. 
and then I'm going to stop and let it set and I'll come back and sand and see what I can get out of it. So first the uh, respirator. So. Pretty close to the two inch mark. This is the um, material is much more uh, fluid than, than a normal body filler, which is kind of the intent. We want it to go on really thin. It's set already. <laughs> you can't wait too long when you're... Well, I guess I'm going to get to test it on this one. That's the first shot right there. I'm going to peel off just a little bit of it here because this really went further than it needed to go. Try to get the high spots off of here. I've got a semi-rigid, um, the other side, a semi-rigid sanding block. The heck of it is, I got a little too much out here, and it hardened on me, t you know, way too fast. Probably because I got nice hot lamps on it. And I'm making slow progress. It was just unfortunate that it hardened up on me so fast that I got caught with too much up in this area. So I'm trying to gently sand that and here I peeled it a little bit to see how thick it was but uh, before it fully hardened so I got to watch that spot. Uh, but you can see that the run is coming to the surface and I can still feel the bumps here so and I've switched over. I started with 320 and I was mostly worried about getting too many scratches out around the edges. Uh, this is 400 and it's a it's a perforated, uh, um, what do you want to call it? Um, it's a porous 400 that goes on the orbital sander and I'm just taking it and using it on a block because being that it's porous it doesn't um, being that it's porous it doesn't tend to clog as easily and it's um, working pretty well. I mean I could switch over and go wet sand at some point here too but for now uh, I'm just going to try to get this material off and see if I can get that run out of there. So as I get further in here I can tell that I'm sanding the putty away and the, the, um, 
run seems like it's still a bit high and there's a little more coming exposed over here. Um, I've cut off a small piece of a paint stick and wrapped my 400 paper around it so I can use it as a very tiny rigid sanding block and then I'm going over this run um, trying to trying to not sand around it as much as you know take the high spots down. I have it now I have it down fairly well you can see the run is pretty well sanded in with 400 and things are starting to get thin um, I've had to like finger sand with a small piece it was kind of thick in here and I'm trying not to sand through that you can see there are a few scratches there um, and I've been sanding the edges with 400 but I don't want too many 400 grit scratches in the paint if I don't have to so I think I've gotten to the point where it's not all the way down. You can see there's a little white around the edges. The, the, the run's got some more to go and the, the sag here. But I think it's about time to switch to 600 and try to work with a smaller grit. And then I'm going to keep working up from there. Got to start working the edges a little bit too because all this at the outside has to be gone too. So. Still not all the way down there. I'm going to take a. I'm going to go back with the 600 on a small piece of wood, which is really flat. I'll try to work the high spots here a little bit more. I watched the expert from Sherwin Williams do this on a video with a power, with a orbital sander, and I'm sorry but I'm just not that brave. Uh, they, they said you can do it by hand or with a power depending on what your com level of comfort is. So. so this is my level of comfort, but it, it's a lot of sanding. It would have been better if I didn't, I, I don't know why that set up so fast, I, as much as I was being careful with the mix, it um, I must have mixed it a little too hot. I, it's supposed to set quickly, but I wasn't prepared for that. Some of this is coming in pretty good. As long as I still got white around the edges, then and I know I'm not quite flat yet. When you're sanding dry, that paper really clogs up pretty fast. So I moved to using my little block. I decided to use my little block here. Uh, with a bit of water. And you can see it's starting to come in all the way out, out to here and I'm managing to get the uh, rest of the putty off. When I do this the next time I'll need to taper it a little bit more at the edges. And then this surface is concave. It's got it's kind of hollow which makes sanding a little bit more challenging than if it was on the convex side. Continuing to make progress there's still just a a little bit of the run left but it's getting down to the bottom so keep going here with 600 for a bit well at this stage the runs pretty much gone there's still just a hair there and uh, I'm gonna keep going here with my 600 the tough part is getting the uh, getting the edges here of the, of the filler off but I've almost got the run out a lot of sanding with the little um, piece of wooden stick just very gently trying to hit the high spots and not the low spots. But even here I can kind of see that you know the way it's been sanding um, you know in here it's not been contacting a lot because the high spots are here. The 600 got it down so it's smooth I can just see a faint bit of run there uh, because of I think the difference in sanding but it's smooth and I got just a few things of putty left behind so I think I'm going to switch to finer paper now. So I'm going to move to water with a little bit of 1000 here and see how that works. Should continue to smooth things out and hopefully knock off some of the rest of the... Oh, it is doing a good job on knocking off the rest of the uh, putty. Again, the whole thing is to try to get the run off and the putty off without going through the color code into the underneath color code, you know. 
and it's probably triply hard being flexible parts. These things move around a little bit and they aren't perfectly flat so you got to be a little careful with a sanding block that you don't uh, continue to go through stuff, you know. But the goal here is to go through with a, some successive um, finer grits and knock off the scratches that we put in with the, with the other sandpaper. So I've got, I didn't have 800, but I have 1,000, 1,500, 2,000, and 3,000. And so that's going to be my progression. The tricky part, kind of tricky part here, is to get around this bend without going through the paint on the bend, you know. Because the last thing you want to do is put in all this much work and go through it on the edge and make a mess. And you can't see it, but on the floor I have a clean basin with water in it, and so I can dip and rinse and uh, knock off my um, sanding debris. A little bit up here on the top edge yet. Okay, and now I'm going to take the paper off and do this part by hand. Let's just roll over the edge a little bit, like so. I mean, I have a flexible block, but it really wasn't conforming very well to the surface, so... You generally don't like to use just finger pressure, because sometimes that gets kind of uneven, but... That looks pretty good so far. But I'll tell you, I really don't see the run anymore. I think that's pretty well knocked out. Well, I went over that with 1,500. Now I got 2,000. So we'll go over this one more time. I'm just trying to, trying to get, make sure I get the scratches out. Try to go around this bend again. I'm sure there's no sign of a run anymore. Looks nice. say just looking at it wet, I think we did it. It, um, I mean the run is gone and I don't see any changes in color that suggest that I went through. So the next step out of this would be to um, compound it to, um, to pop, buff it out, polish it out. I think I am going to do, based on how that worked, you say I don't see any color change, like I sand it through anywhere. Seems kind of amazing, but the technique works, and there's certainly no trace of run anymore. I have a number of other ones on this piece. I think I'm going to go use the same technique and work them out, and then I'll come back and buff. As a reminder, I have that big monster there, and I need to come in here probably with filler you know, go all the way across the front of there and then work that all down. Alright, it makes a smaller batch this time, or a smaller amount of hardening this time. Just a little. And work faster.
hard already. Okay. It took me two doses, but I did manage to get everything on the front side that's got a sag has now got some uh, glazing putty around it. But that stuff really sets up fast, fast, fast. And uh, anyway, I'm going to set the sanding on it and um, and see what I can do here to get it um, get it brought in a line. Given how big this area is, I'm going to get out the orbital with 400 on it and just see if I can give that a give it a start. And if it gets uh, if I get in too far, I'll I'll go back to a block. I started with a block and you can see the high spots there so as long as I stay in here it should work. Let me give it a shot. got a pretty good start with the orbital. You can see the runs are sticking up and I got some of them knocked down a little bit without getting to the base get through the material yet so and I did a little bit over on these others to get them started. Uh, I mean the, the goal with this putty is to be real thin with it but when you only have about a minute and a half of working time it's hard to get it just the way I like it. Um, you know I would I would tend to fuss with it just a little more to get the edges tapered better and sort of like you get one shot to put it on and then it's hard so and I did uh, back off on the amount of hardener I used it's just that's the way the product works so so back to hand sanding here I get my 400 and on the block and keep going now I'm still in here still sanding with my little block so I'm getting closer to be into the bottom 400 grit on a little chunk of wood, a little chunk of painting stick. I'm not all the way down yet, but it's getting pretty close. And um, so I think I'm going to start moving into some 600. I've got all these different spots to work, but I think I'm going to concentrate on finishing this one off, at least most of the way, and then I'll work on the other ones. Just uh, try and keep my attention focused where it needs to be. It's getting close. And once I get this down with 600, I'll work on some of the others probably. Rather than covering that whole area with the big block, I went back to 600 on the tiny one because I'm just I just want to get these last vestiges of the run, get these things knocked out without taking too much paint off the whole panel. But we're getting close. And for the most part, I shouldn't be taking off too much paint because the little bits of white that are still there are. Are, are the original surface and everything else with a with a wooden block I should be working on the top on the what we'd call the edges of the of the runs and so it ought to be good but I am going to try going across here with some 1000 um, even though it's smooth I can still see the run uh, running vertically like things aren't quite matched up and I don't know why so it may just be the scratch patterns but when you put a little water on it they they look about right but I want to make sure so this is thousand grit 
Because if those don't clean up, I don't know what I'm going to do. I may have to respray it after all. Let's let it dry. It's looking better. I can still see it though faintly. Let's let it dry. It's better than it was before. So I'm not going to give up quite yet. Well, I knew that this one was going to be a challenge because it was a really big run. But I thought it was a learning experience and I'd take a shot at it. The uh, challenge is, I don't know if the camera will show it very well, but you can see, there's one yet, um, you can see a number of these, you can still see the runs. They're sanded smooth, they're completely smooth, but they're, and I've been over them with a thousand grit paper, I mean they're, I, I don't think I can go down any further, I mean I've already done it. See if I get a, there you can kind of see the reflection. I don't quite understand why I'm down that deep and the runs look that different. But it was a major run and in the meantime I still have one run on the nose piece on the main front fascia. And now that I've done some practice work here I need to see if I can get that one out or whether I'm going to have to mask and respray that one more time. I hate the thought of doing that um, because otherwise it's it, it turned out very well, but and it's a lot of uh, a lot of uh, masking since I've sprayed the black. So I'm going to work that next. And so I'm going to stop the video at this point. As you can see on this part, there are still a few more areas I need to sand down. I'm struggling a little bit with whether I need to repaint the whole thing or whether I should put in the time to finish it. I'm leaning towards still trying to finish it, but I'll resume in the next video with trying to get that one run off of the main part of the front fascia, because that'll probably make my decision for me as to whether I can get that one uh, cleaned up or not. It looks like the technique works, but uh, I've got more work to do. So, back soon.